Hey everyone, it's Desiree, and I am here with Spellbinders, and we are going to create, as you can see, um, another art journal. I seem to be on a roll with these, and for today's art journal, I'm going to be using the Whimsical and Wild collection by Jane Davenport. There are some beautiful stamps in this collection. Um, just the the freeness, the way that these images flow, um, is absolutely beautiful. So these are the two stamp sets that I have. The one is called Best Leopard. Of course, that's the one with the awesome cat. And this one is called Fairy Tale Fox. So I'm going to use these two stamp sets to create actually the journal. So it's, it's another way to take, if you have, you know, in your collection, in your stash, to take these items, whether they're dies, whether they're stamps, and spread them out, you know, use them for other things. You don't just have to use them for card making. So I'm going to kind of combine these two processes. So I've stamped out the image and I want the leopard to be my focal point of the journal, of the art journal page. So for the girl that's down, um, being hugged by the leopard, which I think is just absolutely adorable. Have I said that? Yes, I have. I'm going to use my alcohol markers. Um, now these, I have the flesh set from Copic because to me, that's the only thing that I understand <laughs> in the Copic world. Um, and then I'll use my Prismacolors um, for her outfits and everything else. So for the cat though, I'm going to use um, the Jane Davenport colored pencil set. Um, it is actually, and I'm grabbing it. They're actually called Magic Wand Pencils. I love the names that she gives um, her her products. It's just awesome. It's They're just great. Um, so... It's a pack um, that comes with 24 pencils. Um, they come in a tin, um, and they're they're very nice to work with. So you'll you'll see more of those in an upcoming video. So once I'm done coloring her, I will use the colored pencils to color the leopard um, to to go around because when I saw the leopard. I actually saw a rainbow, um, or I thought it would look good with that rainbow. So you can see that I am keeping all of the coloring in. All right. It is going to be a sped up just a little bit, um, but I did want you all to see that. So now we're going to start coloring the leopard. Now you can see up in the upper right hand corner, I've got these, I took the pencils and just see what this rainbow that I was looking at. It wasn't, you know, the traditional red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple. Um, it was kind of all the cool shades within the rainbow um, to create that. So I just wanted to see what that would look like. Um, so I kind of tested it. So as you can see, I'm just coming in through those colors and I'm going to push this right up through the, the leopard, you know, going, of course, around the girl, um, and making sure that they're blended and it's going to be even as we get through once the tail, you know, you've got that area of the tail and the head separated. It's going to just even up through that. I am making sure I'm going around the um, spots. I wasn't quite sure what I was going to do with those spots at the time. I didn't know if I was going to use you know, my, my black ink pen, or if I was going to use uh, an acrylic pen, you know, whatever it was, I, I just didn't know. So I didn't want that area to have color on it. Sometimes when you put different mediums on top, it doesn't work. And you'll see that because I do that in here at some point. And I'll make sure I point it out. <laughs> no worries. So you can see um, as I'm continuing through, the face is going to be primarily the darkest of the colors. Um, what I did find with these pencils is they are soft. Doesn't mean that they broke. 
all right they they did not break i sharpened a couple of them they were fine didn't uh fall apart as i was sharpening them sometimes you can get pencils and as you're sharpening them they just keep flaking um, or the barrel inside is broken again items are getting shipped they're not being held gingerly they are you know getting tossed around so it is possible for those barrels to snap and it sometimes as you're sharpening you just see that you keep on getting those pieces to come out um i did not have that with them i thought they were creamy um i just got to keep playing with them to give more information on them um so for basic coloring they are perfect so you can see i have fussy cut the image out i'm using my memento black uh, marker to outline it to remove the white around the focal point I'm now going to stamp my two sentiments and I'm using the two sentiments from the leopard set my best friend is the one who brings out the best in me and that's a quote by Henry Ford and then the other sentiment I'm using comes from the Fox one and that's make life a fairy tale um, I just absolutely loved those two sentiments. I love the font. Um, when this is called whimsical and wild, it truly is. Um, just the whimsical idea of the images, um, how they're drawn, are absolutely beautiful. And if I'm not mistaken, she has a book that's actually called that. And this is where these images come from uh, and how they were developed, which I think is great. So our focal points and our sentiments are done. We're going to set those aside. And now I've pulled out my spray box and I'm going to use my oxide sprays. And I chose to use squeezed lemonade, spiced marmalade, picked raspberry, and chipped sapphire. Um, and you can see I'm just kind of going up the page. I have it angled in my box so that these will drip down. That's exactly what I was looking for. For this, I started with broken china. Yeah. No. So I changed my mind and I want to get chipped sapphire to go across the top. Now I've got a lot of um, product here, um, which is fine, which is what I'm looking for. Because you can see the moment I went back with that pink at the break line, that chipped sapphire just started dripping down this page and I was absolutely in love with it. So this is what the background is actually going to look like. Now, if I would have let this go, I could have let this dry on its own. Those blues and everything may have continued to go down the page. By using my heat gun, I'm stopping that process, if that makes sense. Okay, so if, you're, if there's a look that you like, you can stop it. All right, and that's just by forcing it to dry. Sometimes if you if I would have let this dry on its own that blue may have been farther down It would have taken away that pink that orange and that yellow So know that if you heat set it'll stop it from doing whatever it's doing If that makes sense I'm using the scroll cloud from the Fox stamp set and I'm going to stamp that on top of this because again I want that to be the sky Okay, note to self. So I did a great job making sure that the top part was dry. You can see how it's moving. However, I forgot to move down and now I've just got these big clusters. Remember, whether it's an oxide spray or a stamp pad, <laughs> it is a dye and a pigment ink combination. It will take longer to dry. Matter of fact, forever. So you need to really make sure if you're embossing to make sure that it is dry so that the embossing powder can, will, will wipe away from it or not create the blobs that I have. Now I was good with the blob on the left top. The one that's on the right hand side, very easy. We don't start over. I can just cover it up. That's the beauty of what we do. So you can see that's what my layout's going to look like. I do like the blotchiness on the left-hand side in the sky. It's just like more clouds going on there. I'm using my archival ink in potting soil, and I'm stamping the flowers um, that come from the leopard stamp set just to accent around. I am going to use a piece of green corrugated 
um, that I've torn that's going to be down onto the bottom. Um, so I made sure that that was placed so that I knew where to stamp my images. Now you could have let that go like this, and I probably should have, only because remember what I said, sometimes when you put medias on top of each other, they won't work. So these are the pit pens that I have, the brush nib. The oxide's not completely dry. I'm moving too fast. I'm not making sure that this is dry. And the, and I have to be really quick with the stroke from the pit pen. So I'm not destroying the pit pen. Um, I do not recommend this <laughs> because I, again, I'm taking a chance because that oxide is not dry. I didn't stop. I didn't want you know, to have the differences in it. So I wanted to keep on going. Um, so I should have just let them be stamped in the archival. So they could have been a thought in the background to add that texture because I really didn't have any texture. I didn't do any stenciling. I didn't do any stamping in the background, um, which is, I should have used these for that, or I could have. Um, again, I still like the look of it. I think it looks great. They kind of pop off that page. I'm using the potting soil to go around the sentiments and around my image. I'm going to use my liquid adhesive now to place my corrugated, which I have also gone around the edge for. I'm going to pop up the focal point using some double-sided foam squares. And then I'm going to pop up the larger of the sentiments, and then I will use my liquid adhesive to glue down the second one that's coming from the corrugated up underneath that. I'm going to use the Oxide Vintage Photo to go around the edge. Now, if you saw, I used my deckled edge scissors to cut around the edge of this page. So I've cut away part of the page. I'm going to grab another one. Now remember, this is mixed media from the delusions that I had to cut down because yeah, I dropped it in order. So I cut the pages down, still usable. I'm using one of my black alcohol markers around the outer edge of three sides. And then I'll go around the holes as well. Um, because once this sits on there, I've got that deckled edge and then that black edge just comes around it. Um, I'll do something like that to give it a frame if I don't put a frame on it myself, whether it's, you know, stamping around the edge or using book pages or cardstock to frame the image into this. So I am going to use my liquid adhesive to glue this main panel down onto this second one. So I'm making sure the holes are lined up here, of course, wiggling it, making sure. And then I'm just going to come in on the edge because um, I see part of that background, which is fine. I'm just going to come in just to cover that up. So that's our page so, for, so far. Of course, I'm going to come in with the white gel pen just to give some highlights to the image. Um, you can see that when it comes to my art journal page, I will always give credit, um, to Vicki, which the last name I cannot, and I say it every time I cannot pronounce it. I do not want to chop her last name up, but I, I am very much inspired by how she does her art journals, um, the process that she does, um, and, and just how she puts it together. So you can really see her influence when it comes to uh, my art journals. So, um, but I do enjoy doing art journals. I'm finding doing this time of challenge, um, that's what I'm referring to as at, at right now across the globe. Um, I'm really finding that when it comes to paper crafting, art journals and backgrounds and ink smushing um, really helps relieve any anxiety I may have or any concerns I may be feeling. Um, so I do hope that um, you enjoyed this project. Again, use, you know, taking what we have and you can stretch it. I will have the link to these stamp sets and the entire collection 
down below in the video description in case you wanted to see it. There are some other beautiful images. I mean, all the wild animals um, she created. And again, they're beautifully drawn. So very, very whimsical, very freeing, very light, I, I, what I want to say. If you have any questions or comments, please make sure you leave those down below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Again, I hope you enjoyed this project. I hope um, getting yourselves into your crafty space is helping you to get through this time of challenge that we are having. I hope everyone is safe and healthy and you continue to be that way. But remember what is still most important for me. Always be creative.